Nice. It's then put in this giant sifter to remove husks or hulls, which are the parts of the grain we don't eat. <laughs> that is so cool. And then finally, it's put in bags and it's ready to be shipped to the warehouse. Ah, wow. Any questions? Yes. Could we have one bag of masa, please? Oh, I'm so sorry. We don't have any masa. This is all flour. Oh, what? I'm sorry. Since there's been very little rain, the drought delayed the corn harvest. No corn, no masa. Where does your corn come from? We get ours from local farmers. George knew a farmer who just might have some corn. Look at my new water tank, George. It stores rainwater for my crops. <laughs> what? What is it? George pointed the way to Rankin's farm. <laughs> this is wonderful! It's true the drought delayed the harvest, but thanks to my water tank, we had just enough to get through. I've been harvesting all day. I'm almost afraid to ask, but you say you've been harvesting all day? Yes. So my question is, do you have corn now? Yes. <laughs> you must really like corn. <laughs> Not only did Mr. Rankins have fresh corn, but he also had dried corn that could be ground into masa right away. Come on, boys. We must see that the corn gets through to Marco's abuela. The Tortilla Express is on the way. All right! Ah! Ah! So they took the corn to the mill, where it was ground into masa and put in bags. Come on, boys. <laughs> then they took the bags to the warehouse, where they were packaged for the stores. Ah, look at that. And to the store where they filled the shelves for customers. Here you go. Gracias. And finally, to Marco's house. <laughs> George was surprised. He always knew that Mr. Rankins grew corn, but he didn't realize that the food in the store and in people's homes came from farmers like his friend, Mr. Rankins. She's here! Until that day, George hadn't really thought about how important farmers were to so many people. Surprise! Ay, que bueno! Delicioso, mi amor! Marco's grandmother loved Marco's special tortillas. Mm. This is amazing. What a tortilla. But one person loved them most of all. I could eat a whole stack. Are there more? Ah! Nice. my cow. <laughs> we were playing baseball. Oh, did you touch a fence? <laughs> hey, can we borrow your grandpa's wash tub? Sure, what you working on? Wow, that 
that's the greeniestest thing I have ever, never seen. Yeah, we know. But we'll get that slimy water out fast with this. <sighs> All together. One, two, three! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've worked in my whole entire life so far today. The hard work had made George thirsty, but he wasn't sure he trusted that straw. <gasps> but this time, it didn't go by itself. What was different? Ooh. George tried again from lower down, like he did before. George invented an automatic straw. Oh, you have the straw below the pitcher and gravity is pulling the lemonade out. <gasps> ah! -hoo -hoo -ah! If the straw could drain a glass, what else could it drain? Ah! Is George gonna drink the pool? George, don't drink the pool! George wasn't going to drink the pool. He was going to drain it. Ah! <gasps> it's emptying itself! We oh, did it! We did it! Yes. yes! How fast is it emptying? I think we need a bigger straw. Yeah, like a dinosaur straw. I don't think dinosaurs use straws. Dinosaurs didn't have hands, right? Right. So how'd they drink their milk? You got a point. Mm. Yeah. All George had to do was get the end of the hose below the water level, suck the water in, and then let gravity take over. But sucking water out of a hose was a lot harder than sucking it out of a straw. Too bad we don't have a dinosaur. A dinosaur would have that pool empty in a second. Hmm. <laughs> he was going to give it his best dinosaur try. below the water level and gravity pulled the water out. Ah. Mm -hmm. Hey, not bad for a city kid. <laughs> you did it, George. <laughs> Hi, guys. My hose sprung a leak. Mind if I use yours, Bill? I gotta water my plants. Mm. George had one more idea. Great way to use a siphon. Hey, there's even a word for it. Now we just have to clean the inside of the pool, fill it back up, and we'll be swimming in no time. That's all. Cannonball! <laughs> <laughs> the water was cold and clean. So with a little help from a siphon, summer went swimmingly. Sorry, Grandma, but how he gets too hot exercising outside. Hogs do that sometimes, sweetie. If George couldn't bring Howie inside where it was cool, uh -huh. he'd have to bring the inside cool outside to Howie.
George needed to make his hog exerciser turn, even if it wasn't plugged in. Now, what made that fan turn? <laughs> if George had a wheel, he could make his fan turn too. Where could he find a wheel? Now, instead of being powered by electricity, George's hog exerciser fan was powered by George. <laughs> and Howie could comfortably exercise for 30 minutes. Now all he needs to do is practice walking for the judges. Huh? <laughs> yep, it's step four. We better get started. Every day, Howie had the same routine. He exercised, had a bath, got brushed, practiced walking for the judge, <laughs> and got an apple. Exercised, had a bath, got brushed, practiced walking for the judge, and got an apple. Ah, 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 you did it! Howie practiced so much, he knew it by heart. Yeah. Today's the day. Ready for the fair, Ulysses? George and Howie were ready, too. Oh! Howie had exercised, been bathed, and brushed. Now, he had to walk for the judges. And then he'd get his apple. Well, uh, you're up next. Number 88. And the next contestant is number 88, Howie the Hog. George! Where are you going with that? <laughs> Sorry, but you can't take that into the ring. It's against the rules. Huh? But that's how we always practiced. How can Howie win without it? Final call for Howie. <laughs> Howie was worried. His friends didn't seem to know what to do. But Howie knew it was always the same. He exercised, got bathed, got brushed. And now he was supposed to walk for the judges. And then he'd get his apple. <laughs> Besides having a hard time keeping cool and liking apples, Pigs are really, really smart. We have a winner! Well, I'll be! Oh, we did it! Took a lot of counting, but he finally made it to the eighth floor. We only have seven more minutes. Any way you can do pickups faster? <laughs> Your next pickup is on four. <laughs> George sure wished he had a way to tell what floor he was on without having to start at one. 
elevators had signs that told you what number came next, even if you were somewhere in the middle. George could make a sign, too. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, I'm never going to find a parking spot. Wow, thanks. Now, I just have to go to the ninth floor, which is a long, long way away. Using his numbered fingers, all George had to do was count down from floor eight to floor four. <laughs> Seven. Six. Five. Four. At least he hoped it was four. His counting system worked. Ah, ah here we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're here. Hey, your next pickup's on the 10th floor. No need to start at one. George's fingers told him exactly how to count from four to 10. <laughs> George was on the 10th floor, but his delivery was practically on 10 and a half. Take everything to the first floor quickly. Pepe El Loco will be here any second. <laughs> Made it! <laughs> nice nose. Hello, my name is Pepe. Oh, is that for me? <laughs> my gadget. Oh, thank you. Now, to get to the ninth floor for my show. <laughs> You're right, the elevators are tricky. Hold this for me, will you? Can you believe how hard it is to find a parking spot at this joint? The elephants need a garage. <laughs> eh? Eh, what floor are we on? I was busy with my gadget and forgot to count. I was busy trying to figure out what your gadget was. I, I didn't count either. We'll have to start all over. Uh, I'll be late for my show. Oh, the seventh floor. That monkey is a genius. He certainly is. And now, introducing the world's greatest clown, Pepe El Loco, and his mystery gadget. And it was all made possible by George, a monkey you can really count on. <laughs> a vacuum might pick them up. Again, maybe not. A rug might cover his toys. Don't go, George. Uh. You'll be amazed how easily it fits right back underneath the bed. Uh -huh. That 
That's what George needed, and it was simple. He got plywood from the basement so he could put his toys on it and tuck them away under his bed. <laughs> the pyramid was too tall. Now it was perfect. How did this one move so smoothly? It rolled. Things that roll move smoothly. George found things that roll. Balls rolled right out. And hockey pucks were no better. Train box cars were just right. <laughs> we want to do something for more than three minutes. Let's play catch. <laughs> what are you doing, George? <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Face it, you're no monkey. <laughs> the storm's over. <gasps> ah! He found it. The missing one. <laughs> ah! That's the world's crankiest polar bear. Guardian of the one. <laughs> stop him! I want the one! Stop! Stop! Give me the one! No, give it to me! I want it! It's mine! Can Fearless George ever get out of this? Yes. <laughs> With the aid of his loyal pterodactyl, Hansel. <laughs> well, that was certainly an unexpected twist. He returned the missing one to where it belonged. <laughs> Another mission accomplished by Fearless George, hero of heroes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's play again. This time, George is a wizard trapped on the South Pole by penguins. And if we run out of time, we just roll it under the bed. Whether he was being a wizard or cleaning up toys, Fearless George was up to any challenge. <laughs> <laughs>